Emma, thank you so much for doing this interview, but right off the top, congratulations on your Juno nomination. I do believe this is the second one that you've gotten in your career. Am I correct on that? You are right on that. Yeah, the first one was 2018. Fantastic. How does it feel being a Juno nominee once again on a, you know, not just the fact because of the video, but it's the artist who you worked with on this video too. Oh yeah. This one's like, I, it's a very personal video to me. So it really means a lot that it gets, I, I don't know, to be a part of me. I feel like I'm very much um, in this video. So it's nice to be recognized for that. And then, yeah, I mean, it's a weird year because we're online for the Junos. So it's, you know, going to be a red carpet at my house this year instead of the, you know, the venue in Toronto, but I'm still, I'm still stoked. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's going to be a blast. No matter what, uh, it's going to be history making because I don't think we're ever going to have something like this happen again. I think next year it's going to be different. Maybe it'd be virtual plus live. Who knows what that we can be part of, but Again, this is going to be history making your part of it. So congratulations on that. I got to ask before we get into your career and everything else, what part of the world are you in right now? And how have you been holding up as we just kind of mentioned throughout the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on, I'm on the West Coast right now and I've been, it's been good. It's been like a slower year for sure, like everyone, but I've kind of appreciated the time off, but things are getting back to it. I got my backs. So I'm like feeling a little bit more comfortable and getting out there and like starting to feel like real life's around the corner. So I'm holding up as good as possible. Um, I'm really enjoying the spring too. Fantastic. Are you working on a movie right now as we speak? Uh, yeah, we're, we're just, we're just getting the final pieces in, in place for a uh, fall shoot though. So we're not on set yet. Um, it's a horror film that is called The Northwood. So it's got this northern uh, BC film location. So we're waiting for the weather to cool off just a little bit more. So it's not as, you know, spring. There's a little, it's a little less scary in spring for for us. But I mean, then you got all these other cool movies like Midsummer has proven that wrong. But our film takes place in the fall is the long and short of it. And we'll um, get that going. Yeah, in a couple of months. So it's just gearing up the first few things. It's a lot of these early, early meetings and location scouts and stuff like that right now. Do you pinch yourself when you think about what you're doing right now? I mean, what we just talked about for the last two minutes, you know, Juno nomination, you're doing a movie. This is your second Juno nomination. You know, it's like, do you look at it and go, wow, you know, I worked my ass off for this and I'm doing it now on the highest level. You've got to be proud of yourself. I really appreciate you saying that because that's very nice. And I think it's one of the things that's important. I try to, I try and step back because as you know, when you work your ass off, you kind of get to a place and you're just like, oh no, this didn't happen overnight. This has been for me and the works for, I've been working in the film industry for half of my life now, which is a little bit bananas. Um, and <laughs> I, you know, I feel like I, I'm just trying to step back and appreciate these moments when they come. Cause you know, when they get there, it, it, it doesn't always feel like it's it's a huge, you know, step, but it is a huge, huge thing. Like the Gino nominations, this movie especially is going to be a, a really big thing for me too, because uh, I haven't had the opportunity to work on a project of that size yet. So I'm really excited. Let's talk about your career and the love of film, music. When did this all begin for you? And was there something that really like, um, uh, how do I put it? Uh, you know, sort of made you go, wow, I want to do this because of this. Um, I mean, music, like in music videos, I was just a music fan. And I don't know if there was anything in specific. I wished I could play music. I really did, but I'm not great at, at that. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know if there was a moment specifically with that other than, you know, being a really big fan of finding kind of my own type of music when I was a teenager I think that was a big deal for me as it was probably was with everybody and I grew up in like the suburbs of Vancouver so it wasn't um it I don't know it wasn't a very exciting place and, and I really found like music was super exciting but what we did have in Vancouver at the time and we still do is this really vibrant film industry so working on sets I just wound up working as an extra it was my very first job on set 
And it was kind of love at first sight. Like I started just, I was like, I'm obsessed with this. I started doing other acting work, whatever I could do to get on set. And it was actually, I was on a set. I was just asking a bunch of questions. I was like, I was like, what is that? And people were like, that's a dolly. And I was like, what is that? And they're like, that's, you know, like a flag and a C-stand. And I was just like, so into it. I was so into the process. I wanted to know who everyone was. I was probably 15 at the time. And I was like, just asking questions, asking questions. And then finally it was uh, a DP who is a director of photography. who's like the camera, main camera lighting person on the set. And uh, on this particular job, his name is Tony Mirza. And he was like, hey, like, do you have any interest in just learning how to do this? And um, he offered me a PA job, which was like the lowest of the low. Like I said, you're doing trash and stuff like that before we got on recording. And so I, that was it. Like, I just was in love with it. It's like the process was so magical to me. Just curious though, growing up though, was there a music video that you would say is your favorite? Because of course I'm an old school guy. So I say Michael Jackson's Thriller is always going to be my number one. What would you have said was yours? Oh my God. Like there was a couple that just hit me. This is, there's some stupid ones in there now too, but like, (laughs) Like the Spice Girls had some crazy music videos at the time and that was really young for me, but like, I was like, these are so cool. Like the ones when they were in the desert, the Red Hot Chili Peppers had some really cool ones too at the time. Nirvana had some really cool ones. Hole's Violet video, which was done by a female director too, which was really cool. Um, Cause I was really into like that girl rock, especially when I was a teenager. I was like, oh man, this is so cool to see people be just badass and loud and break the mold. And Michael Jackson, for sure. Like, I've actually gone to go see um, in L.A. You can go visit the house where they film Thriller at. Oh, wow. In Angelino Heights. Yeah, and you can, go, you can go out inside and, like, take pictures with it. And it's, like, the old spooky house. So I'm a, like, music video tourist. Like, I'll actually visit locations like that location because it's so iconic. When did you do or direct your first um, music video? Do you remember how that all came together? Yeah, I mean, I had worked as a PA and like a production designer and things on a bunch of music videos. So I kind of been around it. And I was actually just um, like messaging bands and stuff on on MySpace at the time because Instagram wasn't around. MySpace. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then finally, I was like, listen, just like finding local bands. I was like, I can I can do this for you. Like I've been around it enough. Like uh, just give me a chance. And my first one, like they gave us three hundred dollars to make a music video so we made it is not great and it's like we I had no idea how budgets worked either so it's like 300 bucks like we're gonna get a bunch of locations we're gonna get like dollies and the whole thing but um you know and we we all spent our time and money on it and I had a lot of friends help us but yeah that's how it came about and then from there it was just the slow grind of more $300 videos until we finally started, until we got to Jesse Riaz. How does the technology, how did the technology help you as technology became better and better? How did it help you in your work? Well, I mean, it certainly made it easier for access to, I think that one of the things I get really passionate about when I talk about filmmaking too, is it's like, I get really passionate about representation in filmmaking because there's not a lot of it too. But I think that one of the big things is the barriers of entry. You know, it's like historically filmmaking is a pretty uh, like affluent person's thing to do. So it used to be like film would, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars just to get film and process film. And now you can do something as great quality on your phone. And that's, completely opened it up to anyone so it's more about talent than having the means to get there you know if you didn't go to film school before and you know have the money to make your short film or pour into these things like you couldn't make it now same with music videos too like anyone can go out there and if you're creative you can make something really cool for very little money so it's opened the doors up to new voices your style I've, I've read up and seen your work but people talk a lot about colors textures those are important for you for your uh, for your videos yeah i think that comes from having a bit of a background in the art department and production design i think that um and liking things like you know you see like spice girls music videos or whatever too and they have these crazy cool sets and 
Um, they use color and uh, and and sets and, and textures in really interesting ways. And I think you can create worlds. I think that's music videos that are best are like little mini worlds. So um, I'm all about that. That's a good way to put it. Now, um, I just want to double check and make sure you've worked with Marianne's Trench, right? Yes, a bunch of times, actually. Okay, what is it like to work with them? I've known those guys for years. They're hilarious, extremely talented. Uh, they can have their serious sides, too. But when the light goes on, they are on. What is it like to work with them? And what videos did you work with them on? Well, I've actually I worked on a bunch of their videos before... Um, I even directed them too. So I used to production design their videos and I used to do even like tour content for them too. So I've done like, they, I really appreciate have like a commitment to things too. And they actually want to make like big videos. Like we've done, I did the first one I did with them that was actually a proper music video was a seven and a half minute long music video for one of their like album tracks. Cause if you know them, they make these crazy album tracks with like, orchestral interludes and we went to we shot part of it in the states and part of it in Canada over like five days um and it was it was called Astoria and then we did uh another one called Glimmer and then Rhythm of Your Heart and I think the uh Don't Miss Me was the other one which was kind of a a, a cute funny one so they have a lot of variety in their videos but I like that they commit to things um like fully they really want to be, make full videos which is great and um you know they're they're super super talented and and lovely humans and that makes a difference too like when you're working with people you like nice definitely and you know, one of the nicest people i've also had the chance to meet and interview is jesse riaz when did you two first meet how did you meet and what is it like working with her um I think, you know, the first time we met was through through my friend, Peter Huang, who does a lot of her videos. And he's actually nominated um, in the same category for, oh, wow. for Jesse Reyes as well. Because <laughs> she's nominated for two videos for Video of the Year, because she's that boss. Yeah, wow. um, so it was through Peter, who does a bunch of videos for her. And he's her creative director and was actually the creative director on this video too. So for all of her video content. Um, so he introduced me to her and this particular video had a, uh, this very personal story to Jesse that Peter knew I had a very similar experience in my life to what she'd gone through and had written this song about. So it, it went from there. It was just like on this particular subject matter. I think we just had a really easy flow about what this should be about and the nuances of what the song was. And um, she's really, really interesting to work with and great to work with because she knows what she wants, which is always my favorite type of artist when someone really has a strong idea of their identity and what they like and what they don't like. And that's great for me too, because it's like easy to, to just get, you know, uh, an idea of what we're going for and then chase it and then commit to it, um, which is always good too, because she's not, she's fearless. She's fearless, but I always say with her, she's like this spirit trapped in a body because she just has these ideas and the way she speaks and the way she does things i'm always like this girl is just waiting to just break out and just pass love around the world and and you know her 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 thoughts and emotions like i feel like it's trapped in a body yeah no she's powerful too and i think that's the thing that's amazing when you get with with music or with any kind of art when you just you get goosebumps you know yeah. and there's a couple of her songs. The first one I, I think I ever heard was Figures. And I remember I sent it to my sister who was going through a crazy breakup at the time. I was like, this is your song. And, and she was just all about it. This is this like fierce breakup song. It's just like rips your heart out. And it gave me chills. And then from there, like I'm a genuine fan. I listen to everything that Jesse puts out. So working with her, it's like, it's a, it's a really a dream. Okay, let's get to the official part now. What are you nominated for? What's the video called? And describe the video for us too, please. Absolutely. So I'm nominated for video of the year at the Junos. And it's for uh, No One's in the Room, which is the name of the song. And the video is about uh, Jesse's questioning of God, if I can say that really, and religion more specifically. 
And uh, it's about asking yourself um, who you are, your identity, when no one else is around. And um, so it's some pretty pretty heavy subject matter as well too. It, it, it deals with even, I guess, consciousness if we're talking about who am I when no one else is around. And um, so it's, it's some pretty big stuff. Uh, she was raised in the Catholic church and I was, I was raised in the Baptist church and we both had some conflict with some of the things that the church had set up, I guess, too. And, and then having to come to your own sort of faith and questioning, you know, what you were taught and then finding out what your own identity was. And that was her journey that we sort of explored and was very similar to my journey. You can definitely feel it. I see it and feel it. Those, those I think, are two very powerful elements. As we're getting to the award show, do you know how it's going to work for you? I mean, we kind of talked about virtual and you said probably red carpet at home. Do, have they said anything to you? Because we've seen other award shows like uh, the Grammys, who, you know, people are at home watching faces nominee. Do you know anything what's going to be happening with that? You know, I don't have a ton of information yet. I know that they were supposed to, they were actually supposed to do it yesterday, right? So they've pushed it now to June 6th. Yes. Um, which hopefully means that we're going to have a few more things in place too. We'll have a few more artists performing, things like that, um, who are able to come and do, do that. But um, I don't know. My plans really are just to, I do want to get slightly dressed up. I would like to have a few close friends over if we can do it safely and then. Um, we'll, we'll probably have some drinks, but I'm going to try and celebrate a little. Fantastic. I know I will be in my basement watching it and waiting for the interviews to start. I will say this much, as much as I love doing the red carpets, I love, like, I love everything about being there. This is going to be cool being able to do all my interviews at home and then curl going up to bed. That yeah. Uh, I'm definitely going to enjoy. So um, as we look at the rest of 2021, what other plans do you have? We just talked about the film. Is there anything else that you're exploring? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, definitely the film is the big project too, writing and then moving into narrative in general too. So um, I'm just trying to, we're, I'm doing another short film. I'm finishing that up right now. It's called Sign No More. And then, um, yeah, I'm doing a couple other videos too, hopefully coming up. So. Um, it'll be it'll be more music videos it'll be the movie so i'm just excited to get back to things feeling semi-normal and hopefully traveling again soon yeah definite on that as you wrap this up what advice can you give future uh filmmakers video makers um on you know in this industry because the technology and everything it just moves so fast and for some people it might be moving faster than they can handle it what advice can you give them that hopefully they could be in the same spot that you'll be in, you are in now? Yeah, I think that I wouldn't get too worried about the technology stuff as much. I would just show up and, and make stuff. That's, I think the best advice I ever got was just make things, just show up and make things and make things and make things. I think that uh, it's, it's that marathon, not a sprint type thing is true. And if you just need to cre keep creating things and, and not wait for other people to hand you the opportunities, really. I've always had that DIY, you just got to go after it and, and make it happen for yourself. So attitude, that's that's definitely what I would tell people is just go out there and make stuff. Social media, where do we go to follow you? Oh, my tag is Emma Average um, on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, sorry, what? Emma Average? You? <laughs> Are you yeah, serious? Well, <laughs> I always thought it's like a punk rock name, you know, like you got, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think of punk rock names I can say without swearing. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ones like, um, like Johnny Rotten or something. It's like, right. you want to have this like kind of degrading last name. So Emma Average is like my one, but um, I think it just keeps my my uh, ego in check probably uh, i don't think you have to worry about that an average not even close emma congratulations on your second juno nomination congratulations on your success success i can't even say it success um but more importantly congratulations on opening doors because as we've been uh dealing with the last two three years with the uh me too movement and wanting to see more women in more prominent roles you are definitely one of those leaders being out there and showing that it doesn't matter. 
put your mind to it. You can make it happen. You've definitely proven that. Congratulations on that.